Hello my soccer universe to the review of match day 8 in Euro qualifying. After 8 match days we have already 8 teams that have will have qualified and will be joining Germany. So we know a total of 9 contestants for the Euros next year. Which honestly given that we should know 21 by the end of this qualifying cycle is actually quite little. So there's still quite some competitive games in there. Only a couple of groups that are completely decided and not much more happening there. We also have a few groups where some big names are in serious trouble, more or less, uh, and may have to rely on playoffs that m then only one of them may make it. So have that in mind as well. It's quite in 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 interesting uh, there. We had also a few uh, teams that came back from the brink, still keeping the hopes alive. Especially yesterday, uh, we had quite a few outsiders on the verge of major upsets. Just cannot get it quite done. So there, that as well. And then, of course, we had the tragedy in Brussels where a game had, had to be abandoned after it was known that uh, two Swedish supporters have been shot ahead of the game in Brussels. And then the both teams just said, it's not worth playing on. The group is decided. I am actually not sure whether UEFA will not insist on this being finished because, you know, this has also implications for the seeding for the Euros. But that is another part, first and foremost, of course, uh, is the condolences and, you know, we stand with Sweden. This violence is just ridiculous. But, but that's all I can say for now. Uh, before I spend a lengthy preamble, I would say we dig right in and I actually want to start in Switzerland. Uh, with a crazy 3-3 between Switzerland and Belarus. Um, after the first half, Shakiri scored a... Uh, Shachiri, I think. Shakiri scored a really nice goal. Uh, but then Switzerland kind of showed some uncharacteristic defensive frailties. A bong getting an equalizer, Polyakov in the 69 2-1. And then while Switzerland were pushing for, for the equalizer without creating many chances, they get count, uh, caught on a counter attack that Antilevsky scores the 3-1 after lengthy review and you had to really worry about Swiss Switzerland throwing away all their chances and you know this is a group that's still wide open because both Israel games had to be postponed for obvious reasons as well however in the 89th and the 90th they get the equalizer in very short successions first Akanji uh, was a little bit of uh, of, of a messing on I'm, I'm doing it yeah the goalie did not look good there Switzerland kind of salvaging a point right there that could have gone way worse in that group. Uh, things are still kind of in the balance now. Romania taking the lead thanks to 4-0 over Andorra. However, you know, Switzerland have a game less, Romania don't. So I, I would still say the Swiss are good to go. In Group A, Norway got uh, beaten by Spain at home fully deservedly. Uh, Holland was taken out of, of it. Uh, Oedegaard was taken out of it. It's just this Norway team is really, really unbalanced. Uh, and while Spain's win was totally deserved, the problem was that uh, they already scored a goal that would have been an own goal uh, unless Pat Morata decided to touch it. He was offside. And then for the second one, the Gavi winner, he was also kind of there, uh, just not in interfering. So if you keep Morat and Jake, who actually looks quite good, Spain uh, would have scored more goals than uh, just the one. But it was enough in the same group. Georgia got a 4-0 over Cy Cyprus. Uh, doesn't mean much. It means uh, that Spain are qualified. They take Scotland with them and Georgia are in the playoffs. Let's uh, jump into Group E where the Czechs can beat the Faroe Islands only thanks to a Suchek penalty. Uh, kind of, you know, showing the loss to Albania was not uh, a one-off. Uh, but it still looks kind of good for the Czechs because Poland also are majorly faltering. 1-0 uh, down uh, to Moldova. And they only can manage an equalizer. And so Poland are in more trouble. It will come down to a head-to-head -head between the Poles and the Czechs in, in, in the group with Albania flying really, really high. And that is, I think, a major surprise overall. Um, we had a major result in Car Cardiff with Wales beating Croatia 2-1. Uh, was actually a really good game. Where I think Wales for at least 60 minutes were, were the better team, had much more en energy. Croatia, loads of possession, but kind of empty possession in, in, in a way. And Harry Wilson just after the half and then in the 60th minute, uh, scoring two actually really nicely taken goals. And only then did Croatia come a little bit back into the game. Uh, Pajalic 
Poles, Poles, back and then there was the equalizer in there, but that result puts now Croatia in major, major trouble. And it also enabled Turkey with four second half goals to qualify for the Euros. Believe it or, or not already, because there's now only a three way head to head that can happen up top if Wales beat Turkey as well. And in that one, Turkey will win it, and Croatia actually would miss out. So uh, Croatia need to hope that Wales are not winning the final two games and they need to do their job as well. Otherwise, Croatia have to go in the playoffs. Major, major, major result. For Austria, and I'm wearing Austria, of course, since we qualified, um, it was then on Tuesday a rather messy 1-0 win. Yes, last ditch lineup. And you could tell uh, what was happening, especially in the first half. Yes, Lima had a chance, but there was not much cohesion there. Fortunately, Azerbaijan were not much better. Then the game was won thanks to a hands penalty that Savica converts in the 48th minute. Then they again create a few more chance chances without being really um, convincing, but at least it looked a little bit better with Wimmer, Savica, Baumgartner coming But again, major, major misses for Austria. And then by Ramos misses, by Ramos misses an open net. From like five or six meters out, he puts it on the side. That was a lad, lad of it. Then Burgstaller, a repeat striker, made his uh, car, car comeback. And yeah, Dury got retired with a second yellow card. It was messy, but it got the job done. I already said what happened between Bel Bel Belgium and Sweden. But you know, Austria now joining Belgium uh, on in Germany. The biggest game, nominal of course, was uh, the Netherlands playing in Greece, they get the job done. They were largely the better team. The uh, Greeks made it hard, hard for them, kept the tide without being too offensively going forward. However, the Dutch do not look good. This was everything but a good game. It was a boring, 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 boring watch, to, to, to be honest. Could have gone the Dutch's way very early on, but Weghorst uh, sees a penalty saved by Odysseus. And then the winning goal comes again from a penalty that, yeah, I mean, if you see the reviews, you may or may not give it, but when you see the reviews, yeah, it's not going to be over, overturned. There was about the third penalty given as well. Van Dijk yanks it in uh, in the 93rd third minute. Huge win for the Netherlands. Uh, if they would have lost there, they would have uh, gone the way of Croatia in many, many ways. But for Greece, a uh, draw probably would not have been enough either, to be honest. Uh, Ireland winning 4-0 in Gibraltar. Then Portugal. I have to say this poor Portugal side uh, might be un over over overlooked at the moment. Yes, I still have problems with Ronaldo starting. Uh, I think it's time maybe for a regime change there. However, uh, then he scores the first two goals, a penalty, and then uh, one nicely played goal, uh, Joao Felice assist to make it 2-0. was given initially for off offside, but it wasn't. Bruno Fernandes and Joao Cancelo, a really nice shot. And then another one that was given for offside, but, the, uh, but in the end counted through for Joao Felice. The offensive prowess of Portugal is scary. And they also have really good uh, defenders, mid midfield. This is a really complete team. Watch out for Portugal. That's what all, all I'm saying. Winning 5-0 in Bosnia, that's not some, something you do every Sunday, Saturday afternoon, I would claim. So uh, really, really, really impressive right there. However, the big game in death group was Slovakia's 1-0 win in Luxembourg. Uh, Luxembourg thought they had, had a penalty. Then I think just because the Slovakian defender got to the ball first, it was called off. Uh, was a very even game. In the end, it's decided by uh, Hanschka Korn and Duris uh, header in the 77th minute. Huge win for Slovakia. If Luxembourg, whoever will have won that one more or less has the, uh, the spot sealed up in Germany. And so it is Slovakia. And then yesterday, England, Italy. I actually liked, especially what Italy did in the first half overall, I liked them even a little bit better than England. But it was already telling when I saw just the players line up, I could name every single England player. I had doubts for two Italy players. And yes, Scalvini, I had no mental image. And that tells everything. This I is a young, inexperienced squad thrown together. Yes, maybe there is some uh, hope there for the future. They were also an average younger than England, which is not something typical when England and Italy are playing. But it is a hard and long road for Italy, especially now since Spalletti didn't really have much time to prepare them for 
uh, you know, he just took over. Uh, let's put it that way. As in the first half, I actually liked what Italy were doing. Overall, Scamacca giving them a, a go-ahead goal. I mean, the build-up, there was a nice little doggy run in and there. Then there was a lot of lucky pass one. And again, how um, uh, Berardi is uh, running behind Di, Di Lorenzo, getting that pass in. Um, Fratesi stepping over Scamacca. was nicely played. However, then... <sighs> Italy just don't have world-class players. I stated in the short video, and you saw it uh, how in uh, for the penalty, Bellingham is just on a, a diff different level. Yes, Di Lorenzo probably won't want to play the ball. He does not get get the ball. It's a okay, cane penalty equalizer, and then just again uh, for a second half, Italy trying to build something up. Bellingham makes a tackle, Bellingham takes the ball, Bellingham plays the ball to Rashford and it's the speed in there and the way that the Rashford can actually finish because Kane is taking defenders on the outside. It's a different level. And the same thing can come in the fourth or the third goal. The only thing I have to say is that Calvin Phillips probably should have sent off. I don't think he would have changed much on the outcome of the game. Uh, England are just a much more complete team at this moment than Italy without being convincing but I think uh, it is uh, justified to say that with a Bellingham and with a Kane and if they can get the defense somewhat solid this is my only worry for England uh, this England team is also for real in a way um, the things got uh, even harder for it Italy since Ukraine won three one in Malta but that was not an easy win because uh, Mbong gave Malta the lead already in the 12 12 minutes although it went through the legs of the goalie it turned on an absolutely crazy own goal where a, a shot that will 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 combine come and zuli just decides i need to tackle it out and puts it into his own net because he's tripping over absolute uh bonehead uh call and then give a penalty where dovbik uh in the 43rd minute turns him around and then mudrik gets his first goal for ukraine a really nice shot there as well, as we, as we see Ukraine now uh, ahead of Italy, also with a game more. That was the first one of the surprises. We had another surprise really coming. Hungary just needed to go to Lithuania to get a win. Lithuania had just beaten Bulgaria away from home. They had a 2 0 lead at the half. Czernik and Shirvish uh, get, 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 get two goals. A big hole for Hungary that they couldn't uh, dig themselves out. Yes, Sobosla converts the penalty. Varga then gets the equalizer in the 82nd, but they cannot find a winner, so Hungary is still not yet qualified, although with very, 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 very close in the same group. Serbia, despite having lost twice to Hungary, also low, low and good. Mitrovic, brilliant goal, gives them the lead, however, Jovetic, another nice, nice goal. There were really quite a few nice goals in, 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 in this game. Gets the equalizer, and then Montenegro is holding Serbia at bay, holding Serbia, it's frustration. And then uh, Tadic gets a nice run, uh, sees Mitrovic nicely played, 2-1, two, uh, two and then Tadic himself, so Mitrovic assist, 3-1, and so Serbia also more or less qualified with, with that one. Yes, mathematically still possible that they caught, but they hold another head-to-head -head over Montenegro as well. And then we'll finish it with Group H, where major headline. Major head, 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 it was so hard, hard. San Marino scored. Captain Golinucci, yes, it was deflected by Simon Kia, of course, Milan, Milan, Milan player. But they celebrated like they had won just the World Cup. This was the first competitive goals in over two years. Hard, hard work scenes. If you're a Danish fan, you're not happy with it. There was only a 2 1 Hoyland and Paulsen gag and a goal, but it was not a great performance. How about Denmark looking good in this group? Uh, Slovenia uh, with an early free kick at a 1-0 and Kazakhstan get the win in Finland keeping their hopes alive uh, although Finland was large, large about him both of the goals for Kazakhstan can last 15 minutes Finland falling off uh, they are quite some yeah I think this will be Denmark and Slovenia coming out of that group and so if we look now at the winners and losers we see uh, you know the Poland draw and the, the narrow win for the Czechs put them out as uh, second highest winners just behind Slovakia which tells you this is basically winners and losers in terms of qualifying that's why also the Dutch and uh, the Welsh get a big boost Slovenia uh, Serbia similarly and then on the flip side of course Greece Luxembourg Montenegro Poland Finland Croatia they are all having uh, received major dampers 
in the hopes for qualifying. So looking now at the standings, as we already said, in Group A, Spain and Scotland are qualified with Georgia secured of a playoff spot thanks to them winning a Nations group. group. France are also through, the Netherlands now looking much better. They hold the head-to-head -head over Greece uh, and also have a game less. So looking good and Greece have a home home game against France. England also through. Ukraine and Italy. Italy. Italy have a slightly higher chance because, you know, through the playoffs or whatever. But it's a steep road. Italy have to first win at home to North Macedonia, something they have not done previously uh, that easily. And then they have to win away in Leverkusen at, uh, at, uh, at Ukraine. So uh, it's a steep road. It's doable to hold on their test in hand, but it's not an easy road in Ukraine. Then in Group D, Turkey are through thanks to the head-to-head. -head. Again, Wales and Croatia both can reach 16 points. And then if it would be a three-way tie up, up top, Croatia would fall uh, short. So uh, still, Wales need to win those two games as well. And there's a trip to Turkey in there. Um, Albania looking good. Not quite yet qualified, but really looking good. Czechs and Poles um, are um, fighting for the second spot. Belgium, Austria are through. We already said that Hungary and Serbia also looking very good for Hungary and Serbia. Technically, Montenegro can still catch them, but uh, it's not going to happen. And same goes for Slovenia and Denmark. I think Group I, th um, due to Israel not being able, able to play, is way more open than it probably should be. Although I think it will not help Israel having to have so many make-up games. Probably Romania and Switzerland are there. Um, and then Portugal through and Slovakia also looking good. We see here two uh, potential playoff paths. If the current standings would, would remain, we would have an upper path with Croatia, Estonia, Italy and Poland. And there would be a draw. This is not like this, uh, the way it's uh, settled here. So it uh, could be Croatia against Italy. That might not be good for Italy or Croatia. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, the Israel, Iceland, Bosnia, Herzegovina and Finland would be wide open as Georgia, Luxembourg. Greece, I think, would come out of, out of sea. If you look at the expected ones, Italy at the moment are, are in, in, in there. Although I would probably favor them over Poland. I'm not sure if they would have to go to go to Wales. This might be a tough one. The other two are virtually unchanged from what we had before. Uh, upcoming matches. Uh, let's look at the interesting ties. Um, Honestly, Bulgaria, Hungary, for Hungary to qual qualify, uh, Serbia are waiting, you know, if Lithuania gets a result in Montenegro and then, of course, Slovakia can get the job done at home to Iceland, but, you know, not much uh, there. Then Italy need to play against North Macedonia and win and Poland to check, check probably those are two major uh, games right there. Uh, Denmark plays Slovenia, also interesting, I would say. Um, we have also then, uh, yeah, the Israel-Romania game, that, that has has a lot of writing on it. And we already said Croatia and Wales need to get wins in order to keep their hopes alive. So this is for the next match day. Finally, let's look at the favorites. Uh, we have France ahead of England, then Spain, Belgium, Portugal. Germany, thanks to home for the march in the Netherlands since they're already there. That's basically it. I wouldn't even count the Netherlands and Germany in there. I think the top five, those are them for me, the top five favorites. Let's see where it will go. Any case, let, let me know how you enjoyed uh, the international break. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my um, channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so they get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!